Hello, welcome to session three of Discipleship 101. Our study is going to be about the four levels of conflict that every person faces in their life. Have you ever wondered why there were areas in your life, maybe of habits or addictions or behavior patterns that, or thought patterns that you just have not been able to overcome and you just wondered what is the real root issue of this situation? That's what we're going to be talking about in this session today. It is a great study. I hope that you will find a great victory in your life as we go through it. We're going to actually cover it in two sessions. Today we're going to identify what are the four levels of conflict that every person faces and then next session we're going to look at how can we conquer the root of that situation in your life. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus Christ that you will anoint this session, this study, and everyone listening to this teaching, that the power of Almighty God will touch their life powerfully and bring a victory. I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, the Apostle Paul wrote these words. He said, Though we live in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. May I read it to you from the New International Version. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world, on the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. You know, it's not difficult to understand why the Apostle Paul uses that terminology of war when we realize that each of us are battling with a conflict in our own life. That analogy of human life and warfare is all too real for every one of us. Whether we're facing a conflict within our thinking, a conflict within our relationships, a conflict within our own desires and passions, a conflict at work, a conflict in our marriage relationship, a conflict with our kids. It's just like everywhere we turn there is conflict. Well, yeah, because we're, we're in a war. We have an enemy of our soul, Jesus said, the thief, that is the enemy, Lucifer in his kingdom of darkness, comes before to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Jesus Christ makes it possible for us to be victorious in this war. But we have to learn how to fight with spiritual weapons not with our natural carnal self, not with our natural fleshly self. Battling with anger, battling with our tongue, battling with, uh, you know, the natural ways of, of battling, resentment, argumentative, those, those things always lead, always lead to defeat. We, we may win the argument, but we lose the battle. And too often that's been reality. I know in all of our lives. So how do we do this? You know, the, the evangelist D.L. Moody said, I have had more trouble with myself than with any other man. Boy, is that ever true. Is that ever true? Our, our biggest battle is in ourself. Whether it is a struggle with our thought life, we are constantly facing conflict in the inner man. Like I said, whether it's in our thought life, our mind, whether it's in our emotions, a conflict with our will, struggling with an addiction, struggling with our appetites, struggling with temptations, we are constantly facing that conflict. 
there are many kinds of conflicts. And they're faced at four levels. And let's look at what these four levels of conflicts are. The first level, I like to call the, the symptoms. The symptoms. They're, they're the things that we seem to deal with most often. You know, we, but when we're dealing with a symptom, you know, if we've got a pain in our shoulder and we just keep taking more and more Tylenol, and the pain goes away, but that's just the symptom. The problem is still there, that which is causing the pain. That's what you want to get to. What's the cause of the pain? And that's kind of like this level we call, that I like to call symptoms. They're, they're the things you hear a person say, well, if, you know, if Jim could just just conquer his alcohol, if, if, if Sally could just conquer her addiction to prescription drugs if 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 they could just if, if they just wouldn't be so argumentative if you know if if we could, if I could just get Jimmy to do better in school you know and but these are the symptoms these are the symptoms and and do we need to change those things yes of course we do but just changing those is not going to be what changes their life they've got to get to the cause of those things. So what is this, what are these symptoms that we're talking about? Well, I just kind of referenced some of them right there, but let's let's look at them together, shall we? There's, there is a uh, wrong kind of dress that could be, be dressing very revealing, or it could be, you know, the, from the neck to the ankles, you know. Uh, it could be that it always has to be Fifth Avenue, it, it always has to be, you know, the highest level, the most expensive clothes. It, it can't be something you get on sale uh, at Walmart, and it certainly can't be something you get at Goodwill, you know. But we're talking about wrong kind of dress. It has to be always the most expensive, or, or it's always very revealing, or, or it's, you know, they're, they're covering up in an excessive way wrong kind of dress. It could be addiction to smoking, or alcohol, or prescription drugs, or illegal drugs, or addiction to gambling. It could be an eating disorder, whether we're talking about um, uh, anorexia, or bulimia, <coughs> excuse me, or eating for comfort. That's how they deal with their pain. That's how they deal with their depression, their discouragement. So they're always overeating. Could be chronic sickness, or pornography, or lying, or stealing, or cheating, or cursing, poor hygiene, laziness, underachievement, being argumentative, having a temper, uh, always, always being willing to get into a fist fight or a wrestling match. The old term of pugnacious. All of these are the areas of the flesh. And they're symptoms of a deeper problem. All of these are in the area of the flesh. And they reveal a deeper problem. And that's the next level of problem that we deal with when we're talking about dealing with the four levels of conflict. The next level is the conflict of the soul. While the symptoms deal with the conflicts in the flesh, the next level deals with the conflict in the soul. And This is what I call the seedbed of all of these problems in the flesh. This is the seedbed for all of these problems in the flesh. And it's in the area of the soul. What are, what are we talking about? We're talking about dealing with the uh, uh, fear, anxiety, worry, insecurity, inferiority, low self-worth, self-rejection, jealousy envy, rebellion, 
anger, stubbornness. These are the areas in the soul. These are the problems in the soul. Now, have you noticed when, when, we, when we look at these, these are the negative emotions. These are the, the, the really negative areas in our soul that, that, we, that we deal with, that, that cause us to misuse our tongue that cause us to live a life of underachievement, that may be the source of the anxiety that, that causes someone to, to, be, uh, to be dealing with prescription narcotics or, or illegal narcotics. It, it, it's, it's, it's those things that cause a person to be pugnacious, always ready to be argumentative and, and, and ready to fist fight. So we're, we're talking about and yet, this is the area, the symptoms and the seedbed, the conflict in the flesh, the conflict in the soul. This is the area where the overwhelming majority of counseling, psychology, psychiatry, this is where they deal at. This is the area they work with. This is where we medicate and we deal with these things through medication. We deal with these things through through the medical field, and yet it doesn't really resolve the conflict. That's why you have people in counseling for, for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. They're constantly going to their therapist, constantly going to their group sessions, because they, they, they're just dealing with the symptoms, they're dealing with the seedbed, but they really have not reached the root of the problem. And that can only be reached through the power of the gospel, the word of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the Lord Jesus Christ that said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. If the Son hath set you free, you are free in Deed it says in the book of Hebrews that Jesus Christ saves to the uttermost. It is Jesus Christ and the power of the gospel, the word of God, the inner working of the Holy Spirit that can reach to the spirit level, the spirit level. That's the root cause of all the conflict. So let's look at what scripture says are the three root problems of mankind. Go with me, if you would, in the New Testament to the book of 1 John. Not the Gospel of John, but 1 John. We're going to look at chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2. And rather than quoting this to you, I'd like us to read it together. 1 John chapter 2. Boy, when I discovered this, it absolutely revolutionized my life. I'm sorry, I'm being a little slow getting there because I'm, I'm distracting myself by continuing to talk. 1 John chapter 2, there I am. And we're going to read, if you would join with me in reading, verses 15 through 17. Verses 15 to 17. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. The three root problems of man. Whether we're talking about a war, whether we're talking about political issues, whether we're talking about cultural problems, societal problems, whether we're talking about individual problems, the three root problems of mankind. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. These are the root problems that have caused 
every world war, that have caused every societal conflict, every social conflict, that causes every political conflict, these are the three root problems. Now, let's define them. Lust of the flesh. One word definition for lust of the flesh. Immorality. Immorality. Three root problems. And the first one is lust of the flesh. One word definition. Immorality. Now, immorality can be fornication. That's premarital sex. It can be adultery. That's extramarital flesh. It can be perversion. That's taking the natural use, sexual use of the human body and using it in an unnatural way. Whether we're talking pornography, whether we're talking prostitution, whether we're talking other, other forms of, of um, misuse of, of human sexuality. Almighty God gave the gift of human sexuality, but the sin of mankind has distorted it. And so it's become lust of the flesh. The second root problem, lust of the eyes. One word definition for lust of the eyes. Greed. Greed. Now, usually someone says, well, I don't have greed. When we think of greed, we think about Donald Duck's Uncle Scrooge hoarding all of his gold. Okay, But greed is not just the love of money and hoarding lots of money. That's not the only form of greed. You can be as poor as someone living on the streets and have everything you own in a duffel bag or a grocery cart, but if you would kill somebody for taking your duffel bag or your grocery cart, you have a greed problem. Because here's greed, ready? Greed is any time I place my worth or my security upon anything other than God. So if I place my worth in the quality of car that I drive, the quality of clothes that I wear, if I place my worth on the level of my income, I, I got a six-figure income or an eight-figure income, if I place my worth in the, the quality of social standing that I have, and so that, that's what gives me worth. I, I, I have more worth than you do because I drive a Porsche and you drive, you know, uh, a Volkswagen. Okay? That's a greed problem. It's a greed problem because I've placed my worth, my human worth, upon something other than who I am in Jesus Christ. I have a greed problem if I place my security in anything other than God. When Jesus said, the, Jesus said, you worry about all these things. You know, where am I going to get my clothes? Where am I going to get my food? Where am I going to get my shelter? He said, your Heavenly Father knows you have need of all these things. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. That's the place where you establish your security is who you are in Jesus Christ and the kingdom of Almighty God. But when I place my security in my, in my bank account, I place my security in something other than God, I have a greed problem. I have a greed problem. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, those are the first two root problems. Here's the third one. The pride of life. Pride of life. One word definition for pride of life. The biblical term iniquity. Iniquity. Iniquity is self-willed living. Self-willed living. So I insist upon having the right of redress. I insist upon having the final say over my life. I, I consider myself to be a self-made man, a self-made woman. I pull myself up by my bootstraps, okay? Iniquity, self-willed living. Self-willed living is when I am stubborn and I am self-willed, but it also leads to 
what? To not just rebellion and stubbornness, but self-willed living also leads to resentment and bitterness. Unforgiveness. Esau, Esau had a problem with all of these root problems. He was immoral, he had a problem with greed, and he, he, he did not see the real value of even his birthright. And in his, in his stubbornness, in his rebellion, he could not find a place of repentance, Scripture says, even though he sought it with tears because of his self-willed, self -willed, I will rule my life. I will run my life. Someone hurts me. I will get even. I will get even. I will get them back. I will hold them responsible for how they hurt me. So I hold forgiveness. I, uh, unforgiveness. I hold resentment. I hold bitterness in my life. Bitterness is the judgment. You did this to me and I'm judging you for what you did to me. But God says he is the one that is the judge. He is to have that. He wants us to learn the power of forgiveness. And so the three root problems of man, immorality, greed, iniquity, self-willed living. Those are the three root problems that lead to all of this. Now, but what is the root cause of these three root problems? So what's the seedbed, if you will, of these three root problems? Resisting God's grace. Found in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 14 through 16. Follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord seeing to it that none of you come short of the grace of God, and by it a root of bitterness springing up, many be defiled. Literally, the majority be defiled. Okay? The, the root problem of this whole thing is resisting God's grace. So, when, when, you know, whether it's I'm born with a defect of some kind, or I'm born into a highly dysfunctional family, or my parents go through a divorce when I'm young and I take up a hurt, a wound, an offense, or maybe when I'm a child on the playground and, and people kind of reject me and they call me frog face or they call me Dumbo or, or Fatso or, or I, I somehow see myself, maybe as a teenager I go through that season where, where I have acne real bad on my face and I'm just rejecting myself, I'm not accepting myself. I, what happens? All of this, all of this has its root cause in resisting God's grace because God said where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. God's grace that gives us the ability to deal with life and life's problems from His way, from His perspective, through His principles and His precepts. His grace enables us to do that. But if instead of embracing His grace and letting His grace enable me, if I cut that grace off and now I'm handling it through my own power, my own strength, my own way, my own will, then upon that point, I'm going to establish my own security in myself and my ability to handle things. I'm going to establish my security and my worth in the stuff that I have, and I'm going to give in to immorality. And I will and see how that leads to the three root problems that then lead to all of those conflicts in the soul that lead to all of those conflicts in the flesh. The four levels of human conflict that we all deal with. The conflict in the flesh, with the seedbed, the conflict of the soul, 
that has their roots in the three root problems of man, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, immorality, greed, self-willed living. But they all have as their root cause the resistance of God's grace. Now, how do we conquer this? How do we, how do we win this conflict? Faithfully, consistently, that's our study in our next session. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will open our eyes and our understanding to grasp the amazing power that your grace has in our life. I pray for everyone listening to this video that you will open the eyes of their understanding to see that they can identify the root cause of the conflict they're wrestling with in their life. And Lord Jesus Christ, may they see your grace as the answer to it all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to joining you next session.